schadenfreude. Everybody must have screamed, ah, he's a sung hero. A little pushy pushy. Are you back from listening to Stairway to Heaven twice? Now those are just words I looked up on the internet. Unreasonable Doubt, a podcast about West Virginia University basketball, starts now. Hello from the studio in Nitro, West Virginia. This is Unreasonable Doubt. It's a podcast about West Virginia University basketball. I'm Josh Witt, and I'm speaking into this microphone without knowledge of if Raekwon Battle is going to be able to suit up and play this season for the Mountaineers. Don't know it. I don't know if the timing, I know West Virginia took their time in sending in the waiver to the NCAA. I don't know if that's affecting the timing here. Uh, I just know that it's hard to talk about. (laughs) It's hard to talk about the prospects for this season without somebody who is being projected as possibly the leading scorer of the team. I mean, this is even worse than an injury where you you just don't know. Now the NCAA I've seen some mixed results on on the waiver front. Um, Two Cincinnati guys just had their waiver denied. They're going to put in appeals. Now they're waiting on appeals. If battles gets denied, West Virginia, I'm sure we'll put in an appeal. It's, It's not a night and day difference. It's a substantial difference in the outlook for this team. When you plug in Raekwon Battle, or if you say he can't play, because there's if he can't play, there's not there's not a plug in this guy to replace Battle. And if he is on the roster, then we don't have a replacement for the guy who's replacing Battle's production. So it's just so you know. I, I like to I like to have a <laughs> you know me. I'm a simple person. I'm an old fashioned guy. When I try to figure out before any games are played, what I think is going to happen. I like to know who's going to be available. Yes, we know injuries happen. And you you always aren't prepared for those, especially for basketball. Football, you can actually kind of be like, well, this guy's got injury history or this guy's coming off of an injury. So you can maybe factor that in before the season of like, can this guy be healthy for this many games? Basketball is not the same. College basketball is not the same. NBA, you can do that too. But with college basketball, not an 82-game schedule. And so you don't factor that in. And this is a pass or fail situation. Raekwon Battle is going to play or he's not going to play. I guess, I guess there's a scenario where he doesn't know by the first game of the season in early November, and then you're just playing games until you find out. Or... He gets denied, you put the appeal appeal in, and then you're waiting on the appeal as games are played. It's a big part of figuring out what's going to happen. And let's be very clear. I could 100% know that battle is in the fold and still be wrong about my assessment. Because <laughs> there's so many new parts. Have you watched the TV show The Wire? This. And watching the guys go to Kansas City for Big 12 Media Day, no all-new guys. So Coach Eilert, Jesse Edwards, Quinn Slazinski, Kirk Kresha, guys that were not the players not enrolled at WVU last season, and the coach not the head coach. If you've watched the TV show The Wire – a little bit of a spoiler alert. You know, they would go into another season. There's five seasons of The Wire. You'd go into a new season, meet whole new characters. And so this is the same as that. Was that bad television when they introduced new characters? Was season two a bad season of The Wire? No, I would argue every season of The Wire was really good. I enjoyed season four more than season two. If you're comparing The Wire seasons with introducing a whole bunch of new characters. Four over two. But is is this like a one of the best TV shows of all time in The Wire? Or is this like the TV show Survivor? 
where it's a whole new cast and it's just I, it could be the best season. It could be oh no, we're I, we're going to find out. But the predictions are coming in, which is wild because as a human being, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this. The computers have it in their software to figure out how the numbers change based on coaching change, based on player changes. Like it factors all that in. I'd be interested to see what the number that gets plugged in with Bob Huggins as a coach versus Josh Eilert. I bet those numbers are different. And I also bet the numbers are different. I'm guessing they're factoring in battle as being in the fold. I don't know that. But that number is different, battle versus no battle. But the prediction, but, you know, the train's got to run. You know, we got things to do here. There's a, there's a charity exhibition next week. And in a couple of weeks, there's going to be games that count, regardless of the battle waiver. Time has stopped for me with the battle waiver, but everything keeps moving on. And so let's go through some of these preseason rankings. Uh, Spoiler alert, AP poll came out, zero votes for WVU. That's not a new thing in recent history. So let's get into, I'm not going to go over all the computers. Let's go with Evan Maya Cowan first, evanmaya.com. His computer has WVU ranked. (laughs) 69th in division one basketball that's good for 12th in the big 12 that's not last place because there's 14 schools next year there'll be 16 it might still be the big 12 those are that's just what it is does that make any sense no so 12th out of 14 teams here's the concerning part with evan's computer defensive preseason ranking for WVU, 105th. There's 300 and some <laughs> Division One schools. 100 and something at a Power Six school is is bad, and that is last in Evan's computer for the Big 12 by a large margin. Like there's 13 defensive ratings for Big 12 teams. Pause a few seconds, and then you get the WVU as far as Evan's prediction for the Mountaineers defense this season. That, that's concerning. The computer can absolutely be wrong. We'll get to that here in a second. But that is a number that sticks out. And on the surface, as a human, I had that concern for this team. Battle, battle or no battle. Had this concern with Perez in the fold. Now Perez is gone. But the, the guys in the backcourt... Their defense has me concerned. Creesa, Battle, Seth Wilson, uh, Bimbry, if he plays. All these guys, I don't know what they're bringing defensively. Kobe Johnson is a decent defender. Josh Eilert is talking about him being the guy who wants who I, I'm going to for a stop. That's... I don't know what that means. I'm not, it doesn't give me a warm and fuzzy with love and respect to Kobe. So that's the Evan Mayakawa rankings. Ken Pomeroy's computer has come out and has WVU ranked 64th in the country. That's good for 12th in the Big 12. Again, not last place. There's 14 schools. So has West Virginia better than two schools and worse than 11? Okay. I know how you know. I know you know how math works. The defensive preseason ranking not as not as scary as Evans. Uh, there's a theme here with numbers. Defensive preseason ranking in Kim Palm 69th for WVU, which is good for last. 14 out of 14 in the Big 12, but closer to the other teams near the bottom. It's not WVU on a sad no defense island. And Ken Pomeroy's computer, closer to the pack. Now, how did Ken Pomeroy's computer do last year with its preseason baseline prediction? Ken Pomeroy's computer last season had WVU as 73rd in the preseason rankings, and the Mountaineers finished 19th. So when I give you these numbers, it's just a computer trying to figure it out. (laughs) And just like a human, 
computers got lots of data, no games have been played. So they're just trying to figure it out based on past performance and what it can figure out. But that computer, just like humans, doesn't know what Josh Eiler is going to be as a head coach. Josh Eiler doesn't know what he's going to be as a head coach when the games start being played. So don't, don't read too much into that. It is something to look at. <laughs> computer rankings in the preseason, it's something to look at. I don't know if that's the best phrase or catchphrase to get traffic going to those sites. I know I pay attention to them. But let's look at how the computers look with numbers when the season's over. In the last 20 years, three, three Mountaineer teams finished below 69th in Kim Palm's defensive ratings and made the NCAA tournament. So that gives you it's not how you start, or not, it's not how you, before you start, it's how you finish. And so if, if you finish in the computer worse than 69th in the last 20 years for WVU, you made the NCAA tournament three times. So that's not, do that math, not great. Here's the three teams. The 2021 team that by Deuce, before he went to the NBA, uh, that team lost to Jesse Edwards' Syracuse team in the second round. The second team was the 2012 team, led by KJ and Truck Bryant, two seniors and a bunch of freshmen, that got smoked by Gonzaga in the first round. And the third team in the last 20 years was Beeline's 2012 team. That was up 20 on Louisville in the first half in the Elite Eight. We don't have to talk about that. I mean... <laughs> That's that's for me, that's my Hail Mary. It was it was like a 30-minute Hail Mary. <laughs> the WVU Houston game. That's that's my equivalent. It's nothing. There's 13-9, right? And then below that in any sport for WVU, for me, it's that game where well, I don't want again, I don't want to get into it. It it hurts a lot still. So those are your three teams. So to give you an idea, let's just look at last year's Ken Pomeroy rankings. Here are the list of Power Six teams, uh, and I'm cheating with one, that made the NCAA tournament last year with defensive rating lower than 69th. It's a, it's a list of nine. I'm throwing Gonzaga in here. They're, they're not in a Power Six conference, but they, you know, they're, there's talks of them coming to the Big 12. So we'll, we'll lump them in. So Gonzaga, Baylor, Miami, Penn State, Providence, Iowa, NC State, Missouri, and Pittsburgh. 68 teams go to the tournament. I don't know how many Power 5 teams made it. A bunch, a majority. And nine teams had 70th or lower defensive ratings that made it to the NCAA tournament. Of those nine teams, five, including the Miami Hurricanes Final Four team, had offensive ratings in Ken Pomeroy's top 10. So you can have success if you have a, a defensive metric for defense that's not great. You've got to be excellent at offense. So five of those were in the top 10. Seven were in the top 20. So only NC State. And our buddies up north, Pittsburgh, uh, are the two teams that weren't in the top 20 in offense and had a defensive rating below where West Virginia is projected in the preseason this year. And NC State pit 0-2 in the NCAA tournament. They were one and out. So what does that mean for WVU? Coach Eilert's coming in with new, he's saying, I'm, I'm doing new offensive sets, new ideas. Let's hope. The computer is wrong overall, but let's also hope that West Virginia, especially the defense, is better than what the computers are projecting. And if they're not, that's okay, provided that offensively they're juggernauts. Because if they're not and the defense meets the projection, that's a problem.
Shout out to Tyler Redding. He shared on Twitter or X. He had a six and a half hour drive in front of him. And he included this podcast as part of his playlist. So thank you, Tyler. It's very thoughtful. He also included among another podcast, West by Pod, a WVU football podcast that's under the smoking musket umbrella. Joel and Jordan break down WVU football. They're licking their wounds from the Houston game, talking about homecoming and the Oklahoma State game coming up. So listen to West by Pod. Listen to Unreasonable Doubt. Check out everything Smoking Musket at SmokingMusket.com. Follow Smoking Musket on Twitter at Smoking Musket. Do all those things. And thanks, Tyler. At Ty Guy Redding on X. Now let's talk about the human rankings. And my human rankings are coming from, I already told you about the AP poll. If I didn't, they didn't get any votes. The human Rankings come from the Big 12 preseason poll voted on by the Big 12 coaches last week. The humans are a little more optimistic for WVU than the computers. They have West Virginia finishing ninth or projected ninth out of the 14 Big 12 teams. That's a glass half full way of looking at that. The glass half empty way of looking at that is that the coaches are telling specifically Cincinnati and BYU you're not ready for the Big 12. <laughs> in year one, you'll get there, but you moving from wherever you were last season to this season, you're not ready for the gauntlet. And so thus, if you were here last year, that puts you ahead of <laughs> outside of Houston and Central Florida, where computers, humans, frogs, slices of pizza all agree and i'm not i'm just telling you what the projections are is that ucf is going to be in the basement now they can prove everybody wrong but the projections are ucf you're dead last doesn't matter what you are but the big difference in the in the computer rankings and the and the coaches rankings is i think that difference of hey did you play here in the big 12 last year no are you Houston? No? Then you're at the bottom of the conference and prove us wrong. With the exception of Houston, again, they are loaded. They're going to play better competition, but they've shown in the NCAA tournament that uh, they are a force. And are they going to go with one loss in the Big 12 and run rough shot? I have a hard time believing that because that step up from the American to the Big 12 is going to be substantial, uh, but they're still loaded <laughs> and are rightfully picked to be top half of the, you know, depending on where you look, top two that, you know, the coaches have Houston with two first place votes out of the 14 head coaches and pick second in the league. So that's the respect that Kelvin Sampson has and that crew. Uh, are you sitting down? Kansas is picked number one by the coaches and they're loaded we're going to see lots of familiar faces new faces that are coming in to enhance it including hunter dickinson who's preseason player of the year so that's uh so those are your bookends kansas is one ucf is 14 wvu finds itself in the bottom half in computers and humans alike of the big 12 preseason standings also Shout out to WVU's Jesse Edwards. The coaches made him Big 12 preseason honorable mention. And when you look at these individual awards, it involves a lot of Kansas guys, as we've discussed, a lot of Baylor guys, including our old friend Jalen Bridges. He's on honorable mention. Shout out to Jalen. Lots of Texas guys, a couple of Houston guys, a couple of Kansas State guys. Jesse Edwards and Emmanuel Miller from TCU. So there's 14 teams in the Big 12. Seven are represented in the pre in the all preseason team for Big 12. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. If you're not in those seven teams, I'm looking at you, Texas Tech and Iowa State. Lots of bulletin board material for middle of the pack teams that aren't WVU of like, oh, we don't have we don't have anybody. We'll have somebody at the end of the year. 
watch this. So we'll see what that looks like as things go through. And we have a few more weeks to talk about the Big 12 as a whole and what we think is going to happen before the games are played. Bottom half picks. West Virginia is familiar with that from last season. Whole new cast of <laughs> whole new cast of characters. But can they do it again? And if they can, then Coach Eilert stays and we see where things go. And if it doesn't go well, then that was a season of a TV show. <laughs> and you get a whole new cast next season. And we'll have a better idea of how things are going to go this season or just a, a firm understanding of what we're dealing with with one very, <laughs> that's my dog, with one very particular decision. So NCAA, you know, just decide. Let, just say something. Say anything. That's it for this episode of Unreasonable Doubt. Listen on all the platforms or just pick one. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast Podcasts, Spotify Podcast, YouTube. Until next time, I'm Josh Witt. This has been Unreasonable Doubt. Josh Eiler, as a head coach for West Virginia in his career, he has zero wins and he has zero losses. 